it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. I hope y'all have had a good Tuesday. I have had a very productive and long day, and it was very nice. Um, this morning, I got up and packaged the cookbooks, and I waited on Amy to get home from school, and me and her rode into town, went to the post office and to the bank, and then we headed over to Ulta. And I needed some eyeliner, and they didn't have the brand I wanted. It's a grocery store, you know, drugstore brand. So they didn't have, uh, it's Rim, Remmel, R-E-M-M-E-L-L, -L, or something like that. I like their eyeliner. So anyway, they didn't have any, but we got a couple of things in there. And then we went to Bell's and got us both a pocketbook. And then I got a new pumpkin for my window in between the kitchen and the living room. So maybe y'all see that um, on the next video I do. And then this evening, I, I edited that uh, chicken parmesan video. It took me most of the day. And then me and my friend, I went to see my friend this evening. We went out to eat and enjoyed our time together. And I left her house at 9 so I could get back here with you girls and guys. You guys. Um, but boy, howdy, what a reading we had, huh? It wasn't just about a baby being born. It was a lot. So, <laughs> I turned on my Audible Bible, and I listened to it on the way to her house. Um, and I rode in Amy's cars, which is nice, because she has Bluetooth, so I can listen to the Audible Bible and turn it up. It's really nice. In my car, I just have to listen to it from the phone, because my car is 1999. It doesn't have Bluetooth or anything crazy like that. Anyway, I got to hear the story twice, so I got to go through it twice real fast. It's so easy to listen to it on the Audible. But, uh, my goodness, what a story, right? So, in chapter 18, um, let's see. The angels come to see um, Abraham. And this just blows my mind, really. But Abraham would continue over and over to ask God to spare the the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he did it because of his, his nephew, Lot, being there. And it just broke his heart that God was going to destroy the city. And he had a lot of nerve, really. I know he was a faithful man and God loved him. And But my goodness, he asked God so many times you know, and ask him over and over, would he spare the city um, if there were, first he started with like 50 righteous men, and then it was 40 righteous men, and then it was 35 righteous men, and then it turned to 15, and then finally 10 was the final. So, apparently there wasn't 10 righteous men in Sodom and Gomorrah because God decided to destroy the city. And he sent three angels, I believe it was three, to, uh, or several angels. I don't know, I think it was three. Oh, and I found out by listening to my Audible Bible, I've been saying Sari, and it's Sarah. Oh, well, sorry, y'all. This whole time we've been talking about Sari, and it's Sarah. So that's before God changes Sarah's name to Sarah. Her name is Sarah. And anyway, so... They get to um, they get to Abraham and uh, tell him, "Hey, we're going to destroy the city." And so Abraham, of course, begs them not to, um, you know, to save Lot. And they decide they're going to do that. So then the angels go to Lot and um, and they tell Lot, "Now, when they get this, is the craziest part." I told y'all if you just read the Old Testament. In the in the in the chapter of Genesis, it's like a soap opera. It's crazy. Um, so the angels knock on the door of Lot. Well, actually, Lot meets him at the at the gate of the city, and he take and he says, "You know, y'all spend the night with me because it was late." So they go to Lot's house and they close the door, and all of the men in the city. And this says, uh, every male in Sodom, every male in Sodom, both young and old, was involved in the assault of the two visitors. 
It says they had become a gang seeking an orgy of rape. Now, that's a big deal. So, hopefully, your grandkids aren't watching. So, um, this was just crazy, crazy. So, the men in Sodom wanted to sodomize the two angels that had come to visit Lot. So, Lot which is ridiculous, really, when I, you know, when you listen to it, offers up his daughters who are virgins and says, hey, take my daughters instead of these two men, mainly because he knew that they were angels. Um, but even so, it was a terrible thing to offer. Um, and the, they didn't want the daughters. They wanted the men. So the angels struck them blind. So they became blind. Okay. And they saved Lot. The, the angel saved Lot by striking the men blind because they got mad at Lot when he wouldn't let them have the angels. Um, and so the angel saved Lot's life then. So um, the angel warns Lot, tells him that he better get the son, his future son-in-laws and his daughters and his wife and get out of that city because it's going to be destroyed. And Apparently, he lollygags around because, for one, the, the son-in-laws, the future son-in-laws, didn't believe him. They thought he was joking. So the angel comes to get him, says, y'all get out of the city now. We're about to destroy the city. Lot, lot, lot lollygags around. So it kind of makes me feel like, well, I'll finish the story, and then I'll tell you how I feel. Um, the angels had to come and pull Lot physically pull him out of the city with his wife and his two daughters. So the, the future brother-in-laws stayed there, okay? Apparently, that place was just unbelievably wicked, you know, uh, just horribly wicked. And so Lot even had to be pulled out. So part of Lot wanted to stay. I guarantee you he did. Uh, so they pull him out of there get him out of the city, tell him to flee to the mountains, and he don't want to flee to the mountains. And so he tells the angels that he wants to go to a small city. And the angel has mercy on him and says, okay, go to the small city. But then he gets so scared when he, when he finds out and he sees that, that Sodom is being burned, he decides to flee to the mountains. But what's terrible is the angel told them not to look back. And we have, I told y'all several weeks ago in a Bible study how we shouldn't look back. We should never look back on our life. We should never live in the past. We should never let it get us down. We should never let it hold us hostage, okay? Make us depressed because it's yesterday. It's the past. And it can be yesterday in the past if you let it, okay? And so what happened is Lot's wife turned around and she looked after they told her not to, and she turned into a pillar of salt. So that's an example even to us today that we're not supposed to turn around and look back because our God is a God of the future. He's a God of second chances. He's a God of tomorrow. And he doesn't want us to wallow in our sorrow and live in the past. He wants us to look for the bright future that he has for us, okay? So, Lot uh, had to be pulled from that city. Then he asked, could he go somewhere else? Then he gets scared and flees to the mountains. So, he gets up in the mountains and his two daughters decide that there's no men around and they're never going to be able to have a child. So, they get their daddy drunk, have a relationship with their daddy, get pregnant, they tell each other, you know, they talk about it. So they, they both do it, get pregnant, and it ends there with Lot and his daughters. Isn't that a horrible story? But the way I look at it is, Lot really probably didn't want to leave that city. If it had been for Abraham asking God to save him, he would have probably never been saved anyway. And the reason I say that is if he, you know, wouldn't if he lovely gagged around to try to get out of the city and then he asked could he do something else and then 
his daughter he offered his daughters to those men and then his daughter slept with him now he didn't know that they slept with him but what comes around goes around it's sin and and it followed them to the mountain you know it's like they couldn't escape it um so the children of those two girls become the moabites and the Ammonites, the uh, Ammonites, I believe is what they're called. Yeah. And um, the younger bore a son and called him uh, Benami. And he is the father of the Ammonites to this day. And the firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. And he's the father of the Moabites to this day. Then we go into chapter 20. And um, if that wasn't a spicy and juicy enough story for you, I mean, good Lord, uh, that's crazy. So then we go into a chapter where Abraham goes into another land, tells him again that Sari, uh, well, Sarai, his, his sister, the king once again decides that she's beautiful. She must have been a pretty woman even when she was old. Uh, for this man to want her in his, um, what do you call him, harem? Uh, he wanted her. And anyway, so she he, took, he takes her. God comes to him in a dream. He gives her back. Figures out that uh, Abraham is a man of God. So he tells Abraham, look, I know who you are. I know that this God, you know, is powerful. And this is, you know, the God... I, I, he didn't want to cross him. He wanted to bless him. He gave him land. He he was good to him. And then they had some spiff over a well because Abraham had made a, a well on this land and some of the Abimelech, Abimelech's people um, tried to, you know, take the well from him. So Abimelech, of course, told him that he didn't know anything about it. They made amends, and they actually made a covenant together, okay? And then, finally, after all that craziness happens, thank God we got a beautiful baby born named Isaac. So, God uh, appears and lets, you know, them know during this time that they're going to have this baby. Uh, Sari is named Sarah. She gives birth to... Isaac, she weans him. They have a big party. And apparently while they're having the party, Hagar, which was the handmaid's son, which is Ishmael, and I'm sure he was up in age by then. Uh, I would imagine if he was 13 years old when God told Abraham to, you know, the circumcision covenant with Abraham, by now he's probably, who knows, 20s or something. And he makes fun of the baby, and um, Sarah gets upset and throws Hagar out. God tells Abraham not to think it's evil, that it's okay to listen to Sarah, that he is going to give Ishmael a na you know, a big nation as well, but that Isaac is going to be the, the one that he has blessed. And so Isaac um, is born. And let's see, there was one thing I was going to tell you about. Hmm. Oh, so um, she flees again. Now, this is the time that really got to me. I was telling y'all it made me sad the other night, last night. But this is the one that really made me sad. When Hagar... Um, kicks out, um, I mean, when Sarah kicks out Hagar, and Hagar is out crying, and her baby's crying to be fed, and she's crying because she can't feed the baby. That is so awful, sad, but then an angel. You know, this Bible is so full of but gods, but God, but an angel. Uh, thank God, you know, came to her and said, you know, you're going to raise this baby up and um, I'm going to bless him. Uh, 
And so he says, Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Up, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. And then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy and he grew up and he lived in the wilderness and he became an expert with a bow. And he lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. So it, um, he blesses this child because... He's Abraham's, and he made a promise, and God don't break his promises. And then he's also going to bless, of course, Isaac. He's going to make, um, let me let me read about the 12, uh, I want to read you about the 12, if I can find it. Sorry, y'all. It must have been. Anyway, he tells him he's going to make him. Uh, uh, I want to say they said 12 kings or 12 nations. And I'm sure it has to do with the 12 tribes of Israel. I'm sure. It's Isaac. And I haven't studied it, so I can't tell you for sure. But I'm sure that's probably what it is. So I'll look that up and, and have it tomorrow night and not be so goofy. And um, try to bring up something that I can't finish. But you know, that's just part of it. Um, I hope that y'all enjoyed the reading. The next uh, reading is going to be... Um, The sacrifice of Isaac. We've all heard that story. It's a, so. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna read about the sacrifice of Isaac. The Sarah dies and her burial. And let's go ahead and read Isaac and Rebecca because that's the, you know, because the two first ones are kind of sad, um, you know, scriptures. But when Isaac meets Rebecca, that's just a beautiful picture. And so we'll read that as well. So these are going to be 21, uh, no, 22, 23, and 24. And we'll talk about them tomorrow night. I hope that y'all read that material. And if you didn't, go back and read it because it is something else. It's just unbelievable. Um, these th Genesis is one of my favorite books. It just is. Um, it, it shows us so much about who God is. And what he done for his people. And how he kept picking them up. And and blessing them. And it's just, to me, Genesis is, is so full of hope. Um, and, and, and Jesus is not even really in the picture yet. But it, it's pointing to him, you know. So, um, I hope y'all have enjoyed it. And I enjoy getting on here and talking with y'all about the Lord. And we are going to say our prayers, and um, I will see y'all tomorrow. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today, and we thank you for being a blessing in our life, for sending your Holy Spirit to live within us when we accept your Son as our personal Savior. Um, we thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your love. We pray that you would um, help protect us each and every day and protect those of, that we love. Thank you, and I uh, pray that you bless each and every one of these um, viewers, that you would um, help them and help them grow in your word and faith, grow in their faith and love, bless them in their lives, and help us um, be protected from the evil that's around us each and every day of the world, and I pray that you um, you would just help us so that we would know right from wrong and um, show others what it means to be a Christian. And I hope that there's just some somehow, some way we can radiate your love enough that somebody 
would want to be around us and be happy um, and want what we have. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'll see y'all tomorrow. If y'all haven't watched the um, Chicken Parmesan video, y'all go watch it. And if you haven't read your scriptures, at least download the Audible app and just listen to them. It only takes a minute to listen to them. You literally can listen to three chapters in less than 10 minutes. So, it's uh, really easy. Try to give God 10 minutes, okay? Um, y'all have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow. I love you. Bye.